The hypothesis is the cornerstone of the scientific method. It is an educated guess about how the world works that integrates knowledge with observation. Throughout history, many people have presented hypotheses that went against the current thinking of the time, be it the church, scientific community, or those in power. They were roundly denounced and often viciously attacked, only later to be proven right. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus, a Polish astronomer, postulated his theory of heliocentrism, that is, the Earth orbits around the Sun, as opposed to the Sun orbiting around the Earth. Most scientists of that time believed the Earth was the center of everything in the skies. It was obvious the Sun revolved around the Earth and would not tolerate any other view. Copernicus's theory was heavily criticized by religious leaders and he was completely ignored. In today's world, he would have been labeled a conspiracy theorist. Some 50 years later, in the early 1600s, Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei made his own observations. He came to the same conclusion as Copernicus. It became generally known as Copernicanism and was banned by the Inquisition. In 1616, Galileo was ordered to abstain completely from teaching or defending this doctrine, from discussing it and to abandon completely the opinion that the sun stands still at the center of the world and the earth moves around it. He was literally ordered not to hold, teach or defend it in any way, whatever, either orally or in writing. In 1633, Galileo was convicted of heresy and spent the rest of his life under house arrest. It later became proven by others that the Earth does indeed orbit around the Sun. The mounting evidence eventually proved that Copernicus and Galileo had been right, and the scientific and religious institutions of the time were wrong. It wasn't until 1992, over 300 years later, that the Vatican finally apologized and pardoned Galileo. In 1628, English physician William Harvey published his book, Do Motto Cordis, or On the Motion of the Heart and Blood. The book describes the structure of the heart and arteries. It described for the very first time that blood passes around the body and through the heart, not the liver as was currently believed at the time. We take it for granted today, but 400 years ago, no one had any idea the body has a circulatory system. Harvey's findings were ridiculed by many doctors of the 17th century. He was ostracized by the scientific world. Harvey eventually became a recluse and spent the rest of his life in isolation, rather than have to deal with a majority of disbelievers, whom he referred to as the faithless sea. It was eventually proven that he was right. In the 1840s, Ignaz Semmelweis, a Hungarian physician, was working at the Vienna General Hospital. It had a bad mortality rate for mothers who had just given birth, and he wanted to understand why. He noticed at a nearby hospital it was much lower, and set about trying to identify what was the reason for the difference. He observed at his hospital, medical students often went straight from autopsy and cadavers to birthing babies. There was no concept of germs then, and he eventually hypothesized it was due to a lack of cleanliness that was causing the unnecessary deaths. When he had doctors and midwives wash their hands in chlorine lime solutions, he discovered the mortality rates reduced significantly. His conclusion was washing hands in between medical procedures prevented unexpected deaths. Washing of hands was not a common thing to do 200 years ago. His theory of washing hands wasn't well received throughout Europe. 
Doctors were offended that Samoais was implying patient deaths were due to their dirtiness and they refused to believe him. The medical world completely rejected him and he was viewed as an embarrassment. The rejection drove him to alcoholism, depression and isolation. He ended up in a mental asylum where he died forgotten by his peers. He would later be proven right and we all now know today to wash our hands because of him, especially those undertaking medical procedures to prevent the spread of germs and to aid recovery. In 1855, British surgeon Joseph Lister began publishing the results of his research that an antiseptic solution can reduce inflammation and infection. His work was based on the microbiological work of Louis Pasteur to develop an antiseptic to reduce post-surgical mortality in hospitals. His theory was roundly condemned by the establishment. The prestigious medical journal The Lancet published warnings against Lister's practices. Eventually he gave up and instead focused on teaching his findings to young students who had not been influenced by existing beliefs. Over time, his findings were eventually proven correct. In 1859, English biologist Charles Darwin released his book on the origin of the species. He hypothesized that life had common ancestors and that evolution was a process of gradual slow change due to the passing down of heritable traits from one generation to another that adapted the species for survival. The scientific world was outraged at Darwin's theory, especially the powerful religious institutions that believed God had made us as we are. He suffered much ridicule and criticism for many years. Twenty years later, after much scientific scrutiny, his theory of evolution became accepted in scientific circles as correct. Just because we may find a new concept or discovery hard to believe does not mean it is not true or correct. With open minds, it should at least be given the opportunity to prove itself over time as either correct or not correct. And you never know what we may all discover. <laughs>